Here's a view of the new National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., and we're counting down to Monday's special broadcast from that museum. We'll be bringing you the stories of African American pioneers and their contributions to politics, art, pop culture, and science. One story that had been lost to history is about the so-called human computers. They are a group of women, many of them black, who helped put a man on the moon. Their intellect was essential part of America's ability to launch rockets into space. But Jan Crawford shows us how they were relegated to just a footnote in history until now. Five, four, three, two. It was a race to secure America's future at the forefront of space. We have lived on. Fueled by men brave enough to travel where no one had gone before. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> what? The astronauts were superstars, the engineers, the stuff of movie legend. But America's triumph in the space race was made possible by another group the country didn't see. They were called human computers, and they were women, many of them African-American, hired by NASA to hand calculate propulsion, lift, thrust, and trajectory. They had to make sure that the planes were safe, that the planes were fast, that they were efficient that the astronaut not only went out into space, but that he came back safely. I mean, this was life or death. This is life or death. You know, this is the importance. You do the work right, you do it right the first time. The daughter of a NASA scientist, Margot Lee Shetterly, was raised in Hampton, Virginia, the same town where these women once worked, a hidden history that had been staring her in the face. It's not a first or an only story. It's a story of a group of women who were given a chance and who performed and who opened doors for the women who came behind them. Shetterly's new book, Hidden Figures, in his upcoming movie, What do you ladies do for NASA? Calculate your mountain landing, sir. Is the story of how a small band of black women joined the space program in the 50s and the 60s, defying female stereotypes and challenging a segregated system. I had no idea they hired. There are quite a few women working in the space program. One of those women was Katherine Johnson. On her 98th birthday, she still lives by the same motto her father told her when she was young. You're as good as anybody here. And you took that to heart. Yeah, and you know worse. You know better. At NASA, she calculated the trajectory of Alan Shepard's 1961 space flight verified the numbers guiding John Glenn's orbit, and in 1969, her numbers helped the Apollo mission land on the moon. There is no question that every single day, every number, every research report, everything that they did was also directed at expanding the concept of what was possible for people who looked like them. Working in the Jim Crow South, these women were relegated to the back of the bus to get to work. They couldn't use the same bathrooms or sit at the same lunch tables. Langley's newly diverse workforce made it not just a flight laboratory, but a social experiment. Do you think that there's something about math that it, it doesn't matter, it's, it's the equalizer? In math, when you're working with it, what you're doing is either right or it's wrong. Leland Melvin started at NASA just a few years after Johnson retired. Her name was actually spoken kind of like in reverence, you know, like, it's Katherine Johnson. Melvin was an engineer and astronaut who flew on two space missions. They were the barrier breakers that helped other people see that there were other opportunities at NASA. It takes a few people to establish a foothold, no matter what that foothold is. This really is a story about the American dream. And, and I think... the struggle for the American dream, as you A struggle for the American dream. What I really hope this story does is fuse these different histories to the American dream. Just because the protagonists of this book are black women does not mean that this is in any way less an American story. For CBS This Morning, Jan Crawford, Hampton, Virginia.
I'm glad about. that story is coming. It makes it more of an American yes. story. I know. That the story is being told now, at least we're now learning about the story. I love Leland Melvin saying, Katherine Johnson, her name was, I've never heard of the story I've until recently. I know. You know, our kids have these great books. They have Who is Steve Jobs, yes. you know, Who is yes. Harriet Tubman, you know. Uh, they should great do story. Who is Katherine Johnson. There you I thought go. this great NASA scientist. Like you said, Charlie, it's probably America's story. Yeah. And now we're telling it.